Good morning. Question for you. Which tree would you prefer? This tree, artificial or lit up? Or if you come here, this other tree. This tree or these trees. Nothing fake about them. Ornaments, pre-arranged, glistening with the recent rainfall. So today I wanted to um, show you what's going on right around this time of the year. So yeah, star fruits. I mean, I'm telling you, I, I keep saying this, but they do just phenomenally well in the Central Valley. I mean, I'm really surprised, like, not everyone grows these. I don't know why, but I'm telling you, they these guys are like crazy and they make great holiday trees, if you know what I mean. I mean, the ornaments are already pre-arranged. Like, look at it. Yeah. And, and they grow insanely quick too. So that's, that's the deal with store fruits at this time of the year. Guavas, of course, leaves turning uh, red. Typical, this is typical. Ruby Supreme Guava, not much action happening. So if you notice, it, it's mostly wet. Um, we had a good amount of rain just yesterday, so that's, that was very welcome. Uh, when you look at the temperature right now, it's a good, it's a toasty, you know, 44 degrees, which is great. Um, it's cold, but it is great. Yeah, this winter, you know, thanks to the La Nina, I mean, it's, we only had like one frost. It's, we've just been coasting uh, in the high 30s, nighttime, perfect. Well, it's better than before. So uh, assuming this pattern continues for the next two, three months, we are like, these guys are gonna not have an issues, period. Um, yeah, more guava, Ruby Supreme, I'm sorry, uh, Red Malaysian. Of course, again, guavas, this is normal, okay? So don't freak out, this is completely normal. Now down to the mangoes. Man, you probably can't tell, but look at how foggy it is. Yeah, I mean, so foggy that Rooftop is probably up there somewhere. But um, mangoes, loving the uh, added humidity. Yeah. Yeah, these two, I'm really surprised uh, at, at how fast they grow, just because just several years ago, they were, I say, they like this size when planted in the ground three years ago, two years ago. But yeah, great. Ice cream bean tree, the Inga. Man, I'm, I'm really so glad that I tied him to this pole. Otherwise, I mean, the, we, the, it was pretty windy yesterday as well, right before the storm. It, this guy would have been just like swaying left and right, but thanks to the ropes, it's, it's doing great. So these were the two papayas that I planted um, early in the year. Um, so <laughs> if you look at the foliage, I actually found that there was a, um, an animal that was uh, eating the leaves. Um, but the, you know, that is completely fine just because when you look at uh, the new growth coming out to place the damaged leaves, the branches, um, yeah, both of these are, are, are they, they're gonna be okay. Yeah, like if you come from this angle, Check it out, I mean, it's still very much green. Yeah, and um, the jujube, I mean, I, I did prune him down just uh, earlier. Uh, yeah, I mean, the nice thing about the jujube is winter time, they defoliate completely, giving all these tropicals, coriante mango, 
coconut cream mango, manila mango, much needed sunlight. Uh, even this rescue store food is flowering, uh, though not as <laughs> intensive as the ones in the front, but it is flowering. So let's, uh, let's go to the back. Backyard. Winter time. Papaya in your yard. Yeah. So, got another papaya here in a container, okay? In real life, he should not be doing this well. It should not be this big and this tall. But he's been hiding a secret from me. Check it out. <laughs> Looks normal, okay? However, he's actually rooted to the ground. The thing with papayas is because these are such crazy fast growers, the roots will go spread far in search of nutrients. And unfortunately, he's already rooted to the ground to one of the drainage holes on the sides. So my goal for this guy is I'm going to have to remove the container gently uh, and then just put him on a mound and, and basically put him in the ground in this section. But yeah, that's, that's what you get. I mean, these guys, yeah, they, they, they do great here, just like the store food. I mean, I, I'm really surprised more people don't put papayas in the Central Valley. Frost is really not an issue. Yeah. Uh, let me add this mango. Ooh. Can you tell it's cold? Yeah. <laughs> Patanga tuba, jaboticaba, they, they all do great. Even the um, golden glow mango seedling planted uh, two years ago. It's doing great. And this feel of cherimoya. Look at it. Okay, see, see, the, see the damaged foliage on the top, the burnt parts? That's not from the coal. That is from the summer sun. Yeah, these guys need a lot of humidity, which in the summertime we have next to nothing. So as a result, when we get to like 110 degrees, oh yeah, it is gonna get burnt. But chelmoyas do great here. Again, no false protection needed. Mark Twain once said, this is, these foods are the, or something to the fact of, it's the most delicious foods known to mankind. But yeah, and, and I don't disagree with him. It is, it's really good, the chamoya. All righty. Let's, uh, let's check these out. Yeah. Rose apple, yeah. Rose apple, yeah. Uh, these guys, uh, you know, even though it's in the wax jambu, wax apple family, they are one of the hardier varieties. Um, takes the winter and summer without any issues. Oh boy. You know what? BQ Longin, still holding on to the fruits. Yeah, I'm telling you, the, uh, the storm we had yesterday was no joke. Yeah, I mean, as much as I, I provide the wind protection to these guys, nature takes over. Imagine if the Kamana lychee were this size, it would have been like just smacked over the place. So you know what? I wanted to show you the uh, insides of the greenhouse. So check it out, okay. This is, yeah. Again, look at the bottom. This is not even a, 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 an actual like real greenhouse. I just need this section of the yard to be protected against the wind. And uh, it seems to be doing a fairly good job of it. Um, you know, Melee Apple is, it, it does this every year because it is pretty cold. But then you get to like the canisters, the egg fruit plant, Kaimito. Even the acha cha is doing this well. It's it's a cha cha. Yeah. So 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the storm was pretty intense yesterday. It, it put a rip there, but hey, I mean, it, it's doing a pretty good job of it. So I wanted to sh uh, highlight this uh, section for you. I wanted to show you these trees actually. So notice these temporary makeshift protection shelters, I guess. These three, I did not protect, or I did not, uh, yeah, I did not cover. These three mangoes, I didn't cover because they look fine to me. And, and I do want them to stress the winter, so that way following winters, they learn to adapt. That's the whole strategy behind not protecting these younger mangoes. However, Here's the difference, okay, between these three and these two. Here, let me, let me, you know, let me show you this really quick. This is um, the minimal protection I've got. These are just frost fabrics, uh, completely breathable, which is why I just have them here. You, you know, I leave them here for however long and you don't need to take them out. Um, they provide minimal protection, but it is better than nothing. Yeah, completely breathable and uh, water can go through, which is why you see it all wet like this. That's fine. So check it out, okay? This guy versus the other three, okay? Same age, except these three had a one month head start. I planted these guys, um, I wanna say July 6th, and then this guy sometime in August. So these guys had a one month start to get the roots anchored to the ground keep them themselves warm up. Whereas this guy had a late start and that's kind of why you're seeing some damage here from the, 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 the coal. Uh, again, uh, I know I've mentioned this before, but when it comes to the coal damage, it is mostly the new foliage, the ones that just grew up that get damaged. The old ones, fine, okay? So yeah, this is, again, minimal protection. It's just, I'm just covering it up. So yeah, I'm, you could say I'm surrounded by like uh, these ghosts of winter pass <laughs> or Christmas pass. This guy, yeah, another mango. Um, I, you know, I technically don't need to cover this guy. He's doing fine, but I mean, I've got a bunch of these laying around anyway. So, I mean, might as well, right? See, this is one advantage and, and I know I keep mentioning this, but when, when it comes to grafted or ill layered tropicals, get the smaller ones. You can easily protect these like that. Yeah, that's, that's really it. This is minimal protection. The chickens are, they don't need any protection. Uh, the two are copper French uh, Morans. They, they're pretty fluffy and I don't know what Penny is, the, the skinny one, but they seem to be doing fine. But yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, once the trees are established, they are gonna be like this guy here. They, you do not need any protection. He is fine. I mean, uh, in fact, he's, in my opinion, kind of fairly young, but he, when it comes to this age, he's okay with the cold. No issues at all. So yeah, I just wanted to show you uh, what's been happening right around the, the end of uh, December. Again, if the weather pattern holds for the next couple of months, these guys are gonna thrive uh, once uh, the uh, weather warms up and they will, yeah. I mean, every year it just gets, it, it keeps getting better, let's just say. So, all right, have a good morning.